Welcome to this Unreal tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be showing how to create a uh, actor component which can control a light uh, to make it blink. So first thing we need to do is uh, in the content folder just create a folder to store the blueprint. So create a new folder, call it blueprints. And then we'll right click in there and choose blueprint class and there's two kinds of components that you can build one is an actor component um, and this uh, goes inside of all the actors and it can control the actor itself the other one is a scene component but uh, that has a transform on it um, and allows you to move things around on the screen so for this one we want an actor component and we'll name it uh, bpc for blueprint component and then just give it an appropriate name. So inside of the blueprint editor, um, we want to use the begin play and, and the tick event. So the first thing that we need to do inside of this component is get the actor that it is uh, attached to. So to do that, we'll right click and choose Get Owner. This uh, gets the um, actor that this component is attached to. So then what we need to do is search through that uh, actor and get um, a component, a light component. So we multiple choice here, so we go Get Component by Class. And we'll choose light actor sorry light component so that will pick one light component that is found inside of that actor so then we need to store this so to do that that will right click the pin and choose promote a variable and we'll call this uh, control light So then what we need to do is we need to check that that component is valid before we can uh, access uh, any of its members. And from there we want to set the intensity of the light to begin, to begin with. So the initial intensity um, will promote that to a variable and we'll call that the min light intensity. So that initially on begin play will set our light to use this min light intensity value. So it's always at the min. So then what we want to do is Using the tick, we want to smoothly uh, fade the light up to a max light intensity and then back down to the min and just keep oscillating between the two. So when we get the frame time that's elapsed, we need to add that um, to a variable and store its, uh, its value. So we'll promote... Um, Well, we need to add it, add it to the existing elapsed time. So if we promote, promote that to a variable, and we call that progress time. And then what we need to do is, rather than just setting that directly to the uh, progress time, uh, so that we, we end up building up the time uh, continuously, because eventually that progress time would be a very big number if you left the program running. What we need to do is actually run this through a uh, modulus value. So this is going to um, this is going to take whatever our time is and divide into it um, a 
pulse rate. So if we promote that to a variable and we say that that is the pulse rate, this can be whatever time you want. And then what it does, it gets the fractional part of what is what is remaining so that it continually uh, builds up the time, but it, it uh, limits its loop to be something like one second or five seconds and then recess back to zero again. Um, if you look up uh, modulus or modulo, then um, you can find out more about what that does and how it does it. Um, so then what we need to do is actually set the progress time to that value. So we can store the time and this is going, if we set the pulse rate to be five, then this is now going to store uh, zero counting up to five. And then once it gets to five, it'll reset back to zero again and just keep looping like that. So then we want to divide that by the pulse rate. So what this means is that um, once we get up to, say if the pulse rate was five, once this counts up to five, then eventually dividing it by the five will mean that it, it now loops from zero to one. So we can then promote this to a variable. We'll call it uh, progress alpha. So now that we have a value that loops between 0 and 1, now we need to have a way to control the oscillation. And to do this, we can use a, um, a sine wave. And the one that we want is sine in degrees. So this requires a, um, a degree angle as an input. And at the moment, we have a value that oscillates between 0 and 1. Sorry, it doesn't oscillate. It counts up to zero to one and then resets back to zero. So if we um, multiply that value by 360 degrees, we can now use that as an input into the sine wave. And the sine wave will oscillate up and down between minus one and one. So if we then add a mapped mapped range clamped, we can specify that the input is between minus one to one. We can specify then that the output should be at minus one, the min light intensity. And then we can also specify here um, the max light intensity. So we can promote that to a variable. So now we have it, this pin oscillates between the min and the max light intensity. So to con control the uh, light or apply it to the light, we get hold of the control light. We can right click it and say, and convert it to a validated get, which is the same, th the same thing as um, dragging off the pin, type in is valid. That is the same as that. It's just all nicely uh, compacted into one node. So we first of all check to make sure that uh, the control light is valid. And then again we can set the intensity if it is valid. And the intensity will come from the mapped range clamped value. So now if we go to our scene and we'll change the uh, light directional light intensity so it's much darker.
and then we'll drag in a point light. And now what we can do is on the uh, point light, we can go to um, the details panel at the top and we can choose add and then just type in blinker. That will now list the uh, blueprint component that we've just created and add it to this actor. So at the moment, the variables that control this uh, light blinker have not been exposed. So if we go back to that uh, blueprint component, we can choose that we want to make the pulse rate editable, the min light intensity and the max light intensity. And then you make sure you compile to apply that. So now by clicking on the light and then clicking on the light a blinker component, we can now choose the pulse rate and also the max light intensity. So if we play that, you can now see that over three seconds it now pulses. And if we create another one of them, And we can control the pulsing um, independently for each light because that blueprint component that is attached to the actor is, is controlling the actor itself and is not shared across both actors. So if you set the pulse rate to the same values for, for both of them, then at the moment they'll both both pulse together because they're running through that sine wave at the same rate um, and they started in the same location. Now you may want to offset these values. So to do that, we need to uh, offset the um, progress time. So to do that, we'll create another variable and we'll call this the pulse offset specify the type to be float and by default we'll specify that the pulse offset, offset has zero offset and then on begin play after we've set the light intensity we can get the progress time and then we can add to that the pulse offset and then we can set that to the progress time again. And then compile. So now to offset them, we can click on one of the lights and then click on the uh, light blinker component. And I forgot to expose that pulse offset as well. So now we can click on the light blinker and we can specify the pulse offset. So this is pulsing at every one second and we can add an offset of 0.5 seconds. So if we click play now, then now they'll be pulsing with an offset. So if we increase the uh, pulse rate to make it faster, so we uh, we're now pulsing every half a second with an offset of 0.25. Set the other light to be the same. At the moment, the blinker component is uh, using the tick and the tick is told to uh, tick every single frame. You can optimize this uh, a little bit um, 
if we uh, go to the light blinker, we can go to uh, class defaults. And at the moment, the tick interval is set to zero seconds, which means use use uh, tick every frame. So if we set the tick interval to 0.1 and then play, you'll notice that it introduces some stuttering uh, to the pulsing because 0.1 isn't isn't enough. But if you but if you change the tick interval seconds to uh, 0.05 which means that it will now tick every uh, 20th of a second, then uh, that can be quite smooth. There is a little bit of uh, stutter in there, but by default, uh, with the tick interval set at zero seconds, it, uh, if, if you're gonna run the game at 60 FPS, then it's gonna do these calculations 60 times per second. So if you can try and tweak that value, so that it doesn't um, tick as often, then that's a very slight optimization that you can make to something like this that may be reused multiple times throughout the, uh, the map. Thanks for joining me for this video tutorial. If you liked it, then please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.